Superman does Go back to school because you cannot well, spell and your video is The watch can shriek down the game inside the flash's eardrum. Travel to his van to his heart. Yeah, you know, all right, that is it. It's time for round two. Dumb as dirt. Round two. 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 I'm Lazy Dude 99. Now, a while ago, I was bored. I was bored and I thought, you know what? I made a, like a Justice League vs. Avengers video before, but I didn't really explain my point. So maybe I'll just, just for the heck of it, make a simple video of me explaining why I think the Justice League would win over the Avengers. And so I did that. Little did I know that by just doing this video that I just only did because I was bored, it would become my most popular video. I mean, right now, the video has 40,802 views, making it, like, more than my second and third highest viewed videos combined. And that being said, of course, you have a few haters. Some people think that I underestimated some few characters in this video, and... You know what, I agree. Some of the characters in the Justice League. But before we get into that, let me just take a little bit of explanation over some of the common complaints that people had with the video. First complaint. Well, you just put the weakest Avengers versus the strongest Justice League characters. I didn't choose the teams. I, I... I have to stress that really hard because apparently it didn't click in last time. This was original Justice League versus original Avengers. That was it. That was the deal. The first characters that first showed up in Justice League versus the characters that first showed up in the Avengers. That was the whole point. So that's why Wolverine isn't on there. That's why Spider-Man isn't on there. That's why Vision isn't on there. That's why Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver aren't on there. Because they did get on the team, but they weren't original member. I am just tired of commenting people saying, why didn't you put Black Panther in there? Or Vision? And it's very simple. I didn't want to go new current Avengers versus current Justice League because those teams, they change up so often and they're not always matched up. For Justice League and Avengers, they had roughly the same amount of numbers. The only one that I guess people can argue with is Hawkeye, in Black Panther instead of Hawkeye. Maybe I should have put that in. The, I guess you can argue that, but I don't know. I just associate Hawkeye more with Avengers, considering the fact that he's in the Avengers movie. Now, this video was before the Avengers movie, but you know what I mean? Hawkeye, to me, is a character that is more affiliated with the Avengers than Black Panther. So, if anybody ever says on that video again, Oh, you just picked the strongest Justice League members versus the weakest Avengers, then I didn't choose the teams. Get that through the head. Second thing, your spelling is awful. I'll give you that. I mean, I am a horrible speller, and, like, I will say that it is not very professional to have spelling awful in your reviews. Over, give me a break, guys. This video was released March 16th in 2011. This is a two-year-old video. I've improved greatly since then with my editing and checking my spelling. So is the video filled with spelling mistakes? Yes. But what does that have to do with the fight? I mean, seriously, what does that have to do with the fight? I get it, it's not very professional to have spelling mistakes, but the fight, the theories and the stats, well, okay, I didn't have stats, but the theories are still there, whether I spell them wrong or not, they're still there, and I don't think that a person's theory should be automatically discarded just because they're spelt wrong. And the final thing before going into the actual fights that I want to talk about that people said... You're biased, DC fanboy. 
Well, yeah, a little. I mean, how can you not be biased when talking about stuff like this? And me being a little biased about the Justice League doesn't make you any less biased when you comment about the Avengers. Here's the thing, though. If I looked at the Justice League versus Avengers matchups, and I thought, you know what? The Justice League probably would lose to the Avengers. I wouldn't do the video. I would have said, oh, man. Yeah, the Justice League isn't powerful enough. They'd probably lose to the Avengers. Oh, that sucks. Oh, well. And I'd move on. But since I think the Justice League would win against the Avengers, that's why I made the video. So, now, before I get into the actual battle between Justice League and Avengers, and why I think... You know, this isn't Justice League versus Avengers who would win part two. This is why the Justice League would trounce the Avengers. But before I get into that, I want to say I have nothing against any of the Avengers as characters. I think they're all very good characters that have been an influential part of comic books and have lasted this long in history for very good reasons. And I think they're all great characters. So, that being said, moving on to the fight. Now... Do you guys want to know the reason why the Justice League would win over the Avengers? Do you really want to know? Superman and the Flash. It's that simple. I had people say that stuff like maybe Wasp could fly into Flash's veins and burst him from inside or... You know, then uh, someone would shoot Flash in the leg. You guys have no idea how fast the Flash actually is. In a comic book, he said he can move faster than an nanosecond. That's zero 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 point zero zero one seconds. Twelve nanoseconds is the shortest amount of time that humans can measure. In a single second, light can circle around the Earth 7.5 times. In a single attosecond, light would barely manage to move from one end of a molecule to the other end. If you could perceive the world at that speed, even light would appear frozen to you. One attosecond is to a second what the size of an atom is to the size of the entire planet, times 100. If you were an immortal living in that time frame, you would live out the entire age of the universe in the time a normal person takes to blink. And Flash said that he can move faster than an attosecond. Now Superman may not be as fast as Flash, but he's pretty dang fast. And before any of the Avengers could even blink, Flash could grab Superman, take him, place him right behind any of the Avengers, and Superman would go... Psh, 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 psh. And just like that. Hawkeye, Captain America, Iron Man, Wasp, Ant-Man are down. That easily. Because one flick to the back of the head would be able to knock out Hawkeye, would be able to knock out Iron Man. Like some people might say, no, his armor would protect him. No, it wouldn't. You know why? I'd rather let Death Battle explain, since they explain Superman's powers much better than I can. Superman can vibrate his body fast enough to phase through attacks, even turn invisible. By vibrating to just under light speed, Superman can use the infinite mass punch. The speed causes the relative mass of his fist to increase immensely and hits with the force of a supernova. Which explodes at a force of 10 octillion megatons! Thanks, back to the day calendar! In comparison, this is the Tsar, the most powerful bomb mankind has ever tested. 50 megatons. So that punch is like 200 septillion super nukes. That's 24 zeros. Superman is not only strong, but a genius with a super brain that can process information thousands of times faster than an average human. He is capable of strategic fighting even while traveling eight times the speed of light. He's an expert in disabling opponents through pressure point combat and once fought demons in Valhalla alongside Wonder Woman and Thor for 1,000 freaking years. So yeah. Iron Man's armor is strong, but it's not strong enough to stand up to that many nukes. Or, you know, it's not that powerful. So, just think, doink, 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 doink. And you got, even if Wasp is already shrunk, Superman can see on a, mon on a molecule level and would be able to go... And, uh, Hawkeye... 
look, I had one person said that Hawkeye, you've underestimated Hawkeye so much, uh, he'd be able to shoot his bows and take out Batman, whatever. Flash would be able to, like, look at the uh, comic Identity Crisis. The Justice League storm in on a whole bunch of supervillains, and one of the villains, Merlin, who shoots a bow, grabs it and is about to say something to Green Arrow, and then Flash, before Merlin can even blink, breaks all of his arrows and his bow before Merlin even finishes his sentence. Not only can Flash do that to Hawkeye, but he would be able to knock him out and take him out that easily. And so you say, well, five. Obviously, Hulk and Thor are not going down that easy. Hulk and Thor are too powerful to have one slap to the back of the head, knock him out. Iron Man's not that strong, Captain America's not that strong, Hawkeye's not that strong, Wasp is not that strong, and neither is Ant-Man. One quick thing, people always said to me, you called him Giant Man, but he's called Ant-Man, you idiot! Time and reference, people! When I made the video, one movie that had just come out was the Avengers animated movie. In that movie, they always called him Giant Man, and he has been called Giant Man in the past. Now, he's gone back to be, like, then he went from Giant Man to, like, Yellow Jacket, and now he's kind of gone back to Ant-Man more recently. But don't tell me that I'm an idiot for calling him Giant Man when at that time in history, he was called Giant Man! Anyway, my point is, all those five characters would be taken out instantly. Because none of the Avengers have the speed of the Flash or Superman. None of them. Now you might ask, well, if Quicksilver was on here, he'd even the odds. First things first, original Avengers only! Second thing, Quicksilver is not as fast as the Flash. It's been confirmed that he's not as fast as the Flash. So, even if he was on the team, which he isn't, he wouldn't be able to do it. Now, some people might say Hulk and Thor could take on the whole Justice League by themselves. That is where the debate comes in. Now, a lot of people were angry at me for saying that Martian Manhunter would beat Thor. And a lot of people have pointed out, you know, Martian Manhunter wouldn't be able to read Thor's mind. Thor is too powerful. Emma Frost tried to in the comics and she couldn't do it, so what chance does a Martian Manhunter have? Okay, fine. Then he just reads Ant-Man's or Wasp's mind. He doesn't need to find out about Thor by reading Thor's mind. He can read Wasp's mind or Hawkeye's mind or someone who doesn't have mental resistant powers. Anyway, so what you're left with is Thor and Hulk against the whole Justice League. This is where the team aspect would come into play for the Justice League and where the Avengers would fall. Superman would go for the Hulk. Now Martian Manhunter is against Thor, but he's not alone. Why? Because now you have Wonder Woman helping him. Because Superman can take care of Hulk on his own. Thor would be the bigger threat, A, because of the magic, and B, because he can actually rationalize and think. So you have Wonder Woman and the Martian Manhunter taking on Thor, Superman versus Hulk. That's only three members. So what's Green Lantern doing? He'd probably be doing... First of all, he'd probably make a cage or something that would make sure none of the Avengers got up again. Then he would go back and assist... Maybe maybe uh, Wonder Woman and uh, Martian Manhunter. Uh, Flash would be running would be running defense. Anytime there would be a time where the Hulk looks like he's about to s smash Superman, or Thor looks like he's about to hit someone with his hammer, Flash would be, <laughs> grab him, take him out of the way. Well, maybe not so much with Thor, because they would be flying and Flash can't fly. But, you know, Flash would be running defense. If any time Hulk looked like he was about to hit Superman, Flash could just grab him, <laughs> move him out of the way, Hulk would miss. And so that leaves Aquaman and Batman. What are they doing? Now, you could send Aquaman into battle. He's pretty strong, but I do not he's not Thor strong, and he's not Hulk strong. So the best thing for them to do, for both Batman and uh, Aquaman to do, would be to strategize. 
Look at their opponents. Scan them. Well, not scan them, but know what their fighting tendencies are. Know how, what's Thor's strong move. And have, you know, the Martian Manhunter reading some of the minds of the... Um, of the downed Avengers, have him read the mind, send that information to Batman and say, okay, what we need to do is get rid of the hammer. Once Hulk is down, Thor, like once uh, Superman takes care of Hulk, if Thor is still battling, which I assume he would be, because he would be a, the toughest one to take down, I think, Superman could then take Mjolnir. Now, some people say, no! Nobody can take Mjolnir but Thor alone! That's not true. First of all, Captain America has lifted the hammer. Second, so has Betty Ray Bill. So, why were they able to? Because they were deemed worthy. Who? Who in the history of comic books would be more worthy to lift the hammer than Superman? Heck, I think a lot of the Justice League would be able to lift. Batman wouldn't. The, the hammer wouldn't find him worthy because... They, I think the hammer would be afraid of what Batman could do with it, so I don't think that it would let Batman lift it up. Uh, but Wonder Woman, I think, would be able to. Maybe even Martian Manhunter. He's been he's a very decent and calm soul. Why not? A lot of people also pointed out uh, killing things. This is not a death battle, guys. I'm not death battle. This is not a battle where they fight to the death. This is superheroes fighting each other. That's why I said they knocked out these Avengers rather than just put their fists through their head like pie. Now, someone's saying that, okay, why don't the Avengers do that with the Justice League? Why don't the Avengers just crush their weaker players right off the bat? They don't have the speed. Flash is way too fast for them. And Superman is very fast as well. And heck, so is Wonder Woman. Iron Man might be a great tactician. Captain America might be a great battle strategist. But when they're knocked out, and all you're left with is Thor and Hulk, once Superman deals with Hulk, and he can, because he is stronger than Hulk. A lot of people say, well, what about Doomsday? Hulk is just like Doomsday, and the fact that Doomsday is a killing machine. Who won that fight? Superman won! Just because Superman went into a healing coma, and uh, was down for a while doesn't mean Superman didn't win the fight of Superman versus Doomsday. He still won. And he wouldn't be fighting alone this time. As I say, Hulk is like, Hulk smack! Flash would come, grab Superman, take him here. Hulk's still moving. Smash! Who? Huh? Then BOOM! It might be a hard fought battle, but it wouldn't take too long before Superman had Hulk down. And then he can concentrate on Thor. And Thor may be powerful. He might be able to take down the Martian Manhunter. He might even be able to try to take both Martian Manhunter and Wonder Woman. But there's no way Thor could take Martian Manhunter, Wonder Woman, and Superman. And those who say, well, Thor has magic. Superman will be... <laughs> magic is not Superman's weakness. Superman's weakness is kryptonite. Magic is a vulnerability. Meaning he can get hurt by magic. He can get hurt by a hard hit in the face too if it's strong enough. Magic is just easier to hurt him with. That doesn't mean he gets defeated every time. He's taken on Shazam. He's taken on magic users. He hates doing it, but he has taken on magic p users and taken them down. Here's another thing that really bugged me. People said, Well, Martian Manhunter's weakness is just... Fire. Thor will be able to make fire easily. Did nobody even pay attention when I said the whole scenario? Anyone at all? This is a first confrontational fight. Meaning, nobody knows anything about the other. Iron Man doesn't know anything about the Martian Manhunter. Neither does Thor, neither does Hulk, and Superman doesn't know anything about the Hulk or anything about Thor. That is why Martian Manhunter's mind-reading powers come in handy. That's why it gives him such a distinct edge, because all he has to do is read the mind. Like, he tries to read the mind of Thor, okay, he can't. Uh, then he reads the mind of Wasp, 
and he's like, okay, uh, Thor is magic based and Hulk is stronger. Superman, and then telepathically he tells Superman, Superman, go take down Hulk. He is the bigger threat. Then boom! All it would take is five seconds! Now, some people might say the Justice League overpowered. Yeah! They are! This is the difference between the time periods that these two teams were made in. I mean, the Justice League's first appearance was in 1960. Avengers were released in 1963. Now, the dates may not seem that far apart, but you gotta realize the difference between what DC was doing and what Marvel was doing at the time. What DC was doing, what, they were all classic superheroes and go and defeat the bad guy and they're super powerful. Wouldn't you want to do that, kids? And because of Stan Lee, Marvel was moving to the side where they were trying to be more relatable and their characters weren't so humongously powered. And uh, that has changed over the years and so has Justice League. But the original teams were set up way differently. I said it before. Marvel is Marvel's Avengers mostly is filled up with medium powered characters. Characters that are strong and are powerful and are something to be reckoned with, but the only ones that are really extreme powerful people is Hulk and Thor. And Hulk and Thor may be strong, but two against seven with some of the best strategists giving them backup and intel and a mind reader, and someone who can move faster than an attosecond. The Avengers are just... They can't win. This is why it bugs me... Okay, like, I have a thousand and something comments on this video. It is the most popular video I ever have, and probably ever will. I don't mind people disagreeing with me. Fine. What I mind is people who don't actually think these things through. They just say, and some of this for the DC side too, when people say, Batman's on the team, they win. No, you guys just think it through. Why do they win? And for those of you who still don't agree with me, who think you're wrong, I don't know what else I can tell you to convince you. I think that the Avengers aren't powerful enough to take down the Justice League. That is in no way saying that they're not good characters, and it is not even close to saying that they aren't one of the best superhero teams of all time. It just it really bothered me when I saw videos that were like, Vote on which team you think is the most powerful! Vote! It's not a flippin' popularity contest! That's like saying, who would win the fight? Justin Bieber or Muhammad Ali? And Justin Bieber's more popular, so he gets the most votes and wins. That's not how, um, that's not how it works, okay? There has to be a definitive thought-through explanation. Now, I may not know everything about Thor. I may not know everything about all the Marvel characters. Heck, I may not even know everything about all the DC characters. However, that being said, the facts just clearly look to me as the DC characters are more powerful, have different advantages that they can use to quickly take care of the Avengers. You still don't agree? Well, I don't know what else I can say to convince you. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm LazyDude99, and if I don't like it, it's not worth it. See you around. Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel, and wait for more coming soon.